I'm Christina. I'm Catherine. I'm Lisa. I'm Amy. I'm Lauren. And, and we're Cinderella. I'm zoned out. Hey, I'm Christina. I'm Catherine. I'm Lisa. I'm Amy. I'm Lauren. And we're Cimarelli. We are all sisters ages 21 to 29, and we make original music, covers, and other fun videos. We upload at 11 a.m. Eastern time. We upload every Cimarelli Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern time. On our podcast, the Cimarelli Podcast, we did an episode all about dating, and we noticed that you guys loved it, and a lot of you watched it. So then we were like, hmm, we should really do a video about dating. So today, we're gonna do a married, engaged, dating, single Q&A. &A. There you go. That's that. We thought it would be really cool to get different perspectives from different relationship statuses. So we are all gonna answer the same questions and you can get our different perspectives. Answer. I didn't hear anything you just <laughs> said. Really? I'm Christina. I'm Amy. I'm Lisa. I'm Lauren. I'm Catherine. I'm married. I am engaged. I am single. I am engaged. I have a boyfriend and we've been dating for five months. I've been with my husband for 10 years. We've been married for like a year and almost a half. I've been with my fiance for a year and 10 months. My fiance and I are coming up on two and a half years of being together. First question, what qualities are important to you in a husband? The biggest qualities are respect, integrity, and emotional intelligence to me. Like emotionally intelligent of their own self. They don't have to be number one emotional coper, but they need to know what they feel and how to deal with it. Authenticity. Authentic, trustworthy, respectful, honest, all in integrity, the whole package of strong, moral character. That is like really, really, really important to me. And strong faith. Supportive, emotionally available, like is able to empathize with you about your emotions and also able to express their own. A growth mindset. Like I like to work on myself and be aware of myself. Like, oh, I'm doing something wrong here. I need to you know shape that up as time goes by. I look for someone and with someone who has the same kind of values. That's very important. Because if one of you is growing and growing and the other one is not, it's just gonna go like this. For me, I was looking for someone that complimented my personality. So I've always been more outgoing and I've always been really drawn to more introverted type of guys. I just like, I feel like it's a good balance. The biggest thing I look for is, well, not anymore, but used to look for. It was um, someone that just had a very trustworthy vibe. They were true to themselves. They had a strong moral compass and I could trust them. What is your ideal date? Going on a trip, like a weekend trip, or it would be like going to dinner or having a romantic dinner at our house and then like driving around listening to music. Somehow Nick and I get into all these conversations about music and we can talk for like an hour or two hours and play random games if like guess the song like we're on our YouTube channel. We just do that for fun. So that ends up being like the most fun. I feel like when I was single, I had all these like magical experiences of dating. But then now that I'm engaged, I really just love having like the coziest, most relaxing night with my fiance where we just get takeout or maybe we go out to dinner somewhere that's like chill and then just come home and like talk and catch up and then watch a movie. That's like my favorite date. And I know that probably is like the most boring date, but that's what I love, so. I like surprises. First off, it should be a surprise. Just something that's just like fun and random, like go-karting or like, exploring or like going to some like museum or something so it's like a surprise and you have like a fun thing and then you like talk and like connect at the end that's ideal something fun and adventurous like going for a cute drive is really fun i feel like i'm not that picky you know as long as there's good food um ideal date oh i guess um we really like going to get um robin that might be my ideal date right now because we always have the best conversations there what is your definition of love I don't know how to answer this. <laughs> Defining love is obviously a very difficult thing that people really struggle with. The best definition of love I've heard is to put the good of the other ahead of yourself, which does not mean put the other person ahead of yourself, just the other person, it's the good. So sometimes the good of the other person is like not trying to rescue them, not trying to save them, not trying to take responsibility for them when it's their responsibility, and also like, not abandoning yourself for them because that's not putting the good of them above you. The good of them is for you to not abandon yourself. My definition of love is you would do whatever it takes to look out for what is best for the person 
if that makes sense. So like you're constantly um, trying to do what's best for them, help them become the best version of themselves. Also someone that like brings out the best in you. I just feel like it's, it's really more about wanting what's best for that person's soul and caring for their soul. And then someone that also like wants what's best for your soul and cares for your soul. To me, that's like true love. I am going with the Bible and thinking of love is patient, love is kind, that whole verse, Corinthians. When you go through that verse, it really goes along with the saying of like, love is a verb. It's definitely not something you feel. It's definitely not. It is something that you do and you don't do it because you feel a certain way. It's not like, oh, I'm doing this because I feel loving. It's like being loving oftentimes involves not feeling that good and doing something anyway. In my Catholic beliefs of marriage, the purpose is like the sanctification of each other's souls, which is helping the other person become the best person they can be and go to heaven in the end. I think in the simplest way, love is putting what's best for another person over your own wants. If someone is like treating you with respect, putting you first when it matters, or like putting putting another's needs above your own for the sake of love, like to me that's love. It's not like all oh, these fuzzy feelings, that's just like infatuation. It's just like deeply caring for someone. Cause I believe, you know, you love your boyfriend, your girlfriend, but then you love your family, you love your friends. It's more of like an action than a feeling. There are feelings of love, but my definition is more of the action. What are deal breakers to you? Remember as an engaged person. What yes, are deal okay. To you? Deal breakers when you're engaged. I feel like that's like something that would break your engagement. At this point in my life, um, lifestyle differences, I would say. So it's like, if you're like, I really wanna go to this church and someone else is like, I really want to go to this church and I don't want you to go to that church, then it's like, oh, how are you gonna make that work? I wanna be on tour 10 months out of the year and that's the life I want. And your partner's like, I want you to be home, spend time with me. It's like, how do you make that work? So being on the same page is very important. I would probably say cheating. I would say that would break my engagement. An addiction, if I found out about an addiction, especially like knowing that person didn't tell me about that before and then I found out while I was engaged. Any type of like, I guess, breach of trust. That's really what would break. Cause it's like when you're married, you have to kind of work through it. Like, you know, but when you're engaged, it's like, you kind of have the choice. Like, are you gonna live with this person for the rest of your life or not? A deal breaker that I've always had is drinking and drugs. Cause I've been sober my whole life and it's very important to me. It's very like triggering. I've had um, bad experiences with like loved ones in the past. So it's very important to me. My partner is fully sober all the time because I am too. You know, you gotta be on the same page about these things. It's really weird to think about what's a deal breaker in my marriage. Like, what would that be? Because it's like, you get married and you're like, we ain't getting divorced, but I'm thinking about I've thought about this obviously a lot of times. If there was a really, really big thing like drug addiction or alcohol addiction, infidelity, abuse, oh my gosh, I would definitely separate and then see if he would actually, this is so weird because I can't imagine Nick doing any of this, see if he would actually grow, change, rehabilitate himself. And if he didn't, then it's like, okay, cut. But I wouldn't be like, oh, I'll just love you through you abusing me. No. I don't know if some people could think of like, oh, that's a biblical thing. No, 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 It says no. love your neighbor as yourself and you are not loving yourself if you allow yourself to be abused. That's a whole other topic. Biggest deal breakers would be doesn't know what they're feeling, not in touch emotionally with themselves. Disrespect, mm -hmm. wishy-washy, not consistent. The only like deal breaker really for me is if there's a problem and we can't come to some kind of compromise or an agreement, like we just can't fix a problem. Like if it's just something where we realize that we're too different, we can't fix it, then that's the deal breaker. How would you know someone is the one? Uh, I don't really know. I don't know. That's my answer. I would say don't know, but I'm assuming people figure it out somehow and you'd probably just have to speak to the Lord about that one. Okay, so this is a tough one that I wanna say a disclaimer for all of us girls because none of us have been married for 20, 30, 40 years, you know? So we can't be like, I know this and it has held up over time. It's like, you're taking a risk when you marry someone, you're really taking a risk because you're, you're committing your life 
to them, you don't really know. I mean, you, they say like, you know, like when you know, you know, that whole thing, which I, I feel that, but also, you know, I gotta think as well as feel. And that's a tough one because I did have this deep feeling of like peace. It was a deep feeling of peace about Nick. And I felt like, this is my partner in life. Like this is this is the person I wanna go through like the hardest things with and I wanna like share the most like special moments with and and be vulnerable with. But like I said, I haven't been married for 20 years, so maybe it's different than what I thought. You have your list, right? I don't know if you can ever get like everything on your list, but you have to have the important things covered, right? Um, your list shouldn't be super long, but it's like your main important things gotta have them covered. I realized my fiance was the one. It's like the process was I got into the relationship and it's like, okay, cool. Like, let's see where this goes. And as time went by, it's like going through the grocery store and you're like, okay, I'm probably gonna have to go to another grocery store later to get these other things. But as you keep going through the aisles, it's like, oh my gosh, there's the flour I need. Whoa, there's the eggs. But I have to go somewhere else for the organic seaweed, right? And then you see the organic seaweed and you're like, what? Could this grocery store be the one to supply everything that I need? And then on your list, guess what? You have like 16 boxes of chocolate, but there's only one box left. And you're like, oh, I guess this isn't the grocery store because I need 16 boxes of chocolate. And then God taps you on the shoulder and says, hey, buddy, you don't need 16 boxes of chocolate. You only needed one, it's right there. It's like you think you you think you know what your needs are and then you get into it and you realize you know what your needs are and they're all met. I really didn't like it when people would say to me when I was single, like, you'll just know, you'll just know. And I was like, what does that mean? Like, I'd be dating all these people and I was like, do I know? Do I just know? I don't know, it's so confusing, such an esoteric thing. It's weird how it's true, at least it was for me, that I felt like I just knew with Max. I just had a feeling of trust and connection that I'd never had with anyone else. I would say the biggest thing was peace. Like, I would pray about my relationship and I would get such a strong feeling of peace. You gotta like really dig in there and see like, what is in this relationship? You gotta look close. Look at all the darkest places in the relationship. That's what I think. And when you have really gone to those places with each other and you are honest and raw and you're not trying to like make it something it's not, and then you can be like super transparent and vulnerable, authentic, and then you feel this feeling of peace and you're like, yes, this is the person. What is the biggest misconception about being single? That it's this waiting time. It's not exactly as socially acceptable to be not in a relationship, which I don't really understand why. Maybe because we're just like hardwired to be in a relationship to continue the species. I think it is such a beautiful and wonderful time if you use it right. There's no like curse you need to break, which I kind of was like, oh, I can't do anything, I'm single. Baby. It is just a beautiful time for self-exploration, getting to know yourself forging your identity outside of another human and just like a beautiful time of learning and fun. What is the biggest misconception about this stage of life that you are in? It is that, oh, when you're dating, it's just so fun and like easy. And it's just like, haha, you just get to know each other and just have fun. What I have seen is that to actually like deepen a relationship and have like a real honest authentic connection it's hard because you have to talk about things you don't want to talk about you have to be vulnerable and not vulnerable like oh like i cheated on a test one time like you have to say things that are like really hard to say they like i don't know if you're gonna want to be with me when i tell you this i think people think that like oh like in marriage then you it's hard and you have all these conversations but like in dating it's like oh it's just fun it should just be fun but i don't think that really makes a very real good relationship if you just try to have fun all the time what is the biggest misconception about being engaged I feel like people say about being engaged like it's just a whirlwind and you're just stressed all the time because you're planning a wedding and it's crazy and maybe that is for some people i felt very anxious the first few months but it wasn't about the wedding it was more about the gravity of what the decision that i just made like oh my gosh i just said yes to this person for the rest of my life so it's like letting that sink in. The first like six months, it was just kind of slowly planning things. But as it's getting closer, I definitely am starting to feel more stressed. People would say to me like, 
make sure you don't only talk to your fiance about wedding planning. And I'm like, we talk about that a lot, but I feel like we also talk about a lot of other things or like, I don't feel like it's just this constant thing of stress. I feel like it's like exciting and fun. Well, you know what? I think a lot of people have a misconception that if you get engaged, you'll never have doubts again. It's like, oh, we're sealing the deal. It's kind of like now, it's forever because we, because he proposed. Not like, oh, this is right and now we're just taking a step because it's right. Like a lot of people think getting engaged will make it right, but actually you need to know that it's right before you get engaged because otherwise you could break up your engagement or break up your marriage. I don't think being engaged is a solution to anything and um, you need to go in with open eyes. What is the biggest misconception about being married? misconceptions about being married. I feel like one is that your life is over and then it's boring now. Not true at all. I feel more excited about Nick than I was in the beginning, than I was with that new relationship feeling. I feel more excited now, but that's not an accident. It's because I put in so much work towards that, towards like really keeping the relationship alive because it will just die if you don't put work into it. What is the best and worst part about dating? The best part is that you're not alone, but the worst part is that you're not alone. What is the best and the worst part about being single? The best part is the freedom. You can do whatever you want and you don't have to really think about anyone else, which I guess is kind of selfish to say that's the best part, but it is. And then the worst part for me is also the freedom. I'm the kind of person that doesn't like novelty as much and doesn't need a lot of uncertainty. I hate uncertainty. So I would say that's the worst part is the uncertainty and the like, Ooh, when is this gonna happen? What's gonna happen? When am I gonna meet someone? Hit me, hit me, hit me. What is the best and the worst part about being engaged? The best part about it is the joy of preparing for such a huge life change. I feel like it's something I can't even wrap my brain around, but Max truly is my best friend and I'm so excited to get to live with him and build a home with him. The worst part is maybe just the pressure that you feel. Oh, that's real, that's real. You feel so much pressure as like the bride to be like, Everyone I feel like is like, oh, shedding for the wedding, like trying to get in the best shape of your entire life so you can look perfect on your wedding day. I definitely feel that pressure and I'm trying to very actively delete because I don't need to look perfect on my wedding day. And I'm so tired of people saying that. It's like, I'm not a Barbie. Like it's not my job to be perfect. The best part is that it's exciting, I guess. It's like, woo, it's so fun. It doesn't like change who you are as a person once again. But the worst part is wedding planning. Cause I have barely even started yet. And I'm already like, ugh, like going into it looks like a lot of stress and unnecessary details. What is the best and the worst part about being Married. The best part about being married is that I have this lifelong committed partner and it just feels awesome to know that someone has your back in every situation. The worst part about being married is also a good thing, but it's also horrible, is what I said before, being faced with like the biggest problems that you have, your biggest faults, and then also their biggest faults and having to work through both of those things together, it's really difficult, but it's also really good. How do you make time for yourself in your relationship? Ooh, okay. This is one that I just started working on more because I realized um, I needed to. Ooh, that's a really good question. Making time for myself in my marriage is very easy because Nick and I have the opposite problem. We are really independent, like, overly independent where we just really didn't want to be like losing ourselves in the marriage. And so I had to work on like actually like having more together time, you know? So I don't have a problem with that at all. I just say, hey, I'm gonna go do this thing. And he's like, cool. I mean, really, it's just learning how to ask for it in the first place. I don't know, first of all, you have to learn how to recognize that you need more time. So it's like before I would just kind of always like my fiance asked me to hang out and I'm like, yes, you know, automatically would say yes and not really think about like, what do, did I want to do anything else tonight? I was just like, yes. And as I started to get kind of drained, cause I am an introvert, believe it or not, I get drained being around people too much. And I was like, wow, I'm feeling really burnt out. I need to like figure this out. And it was like, oh, because I'm instantly giving away all my time. So learning to recognize when someone asks me to hang out, my fiance in this case, I'm like, okay, do I want to do that? Do I have time to do that? Does this make sense? Yes, okay, do it. Or no. Like yesterday, you know, he asked me to hang out and I was like, you know what? I think I would rather stay home. I would rather do my laundry and lay in my bed. So I said no, and I did that. And then we hung out later and it was fine. I have a hard time 
like putting myself first, especially with a relationship. Like I kind of get into this mode where I'm like, just gotta give, give, give. So <laughs> what I actually do is I plan out self-care nights for myself. Like Monday and Wednesday this week is my self-care night. I'm not talking to anyone. I'm turning off my phone. Like this is my me night. <laughs> well, how do you make time for yourself in your relationship? Um, don't know. I don't even make time for myself and I'm not even in a relationship. I struggled a lot with this in the beginning of my relationship because I am a very independent person and I've always had my own schedule, my own time. Like from when I got my license, basically, I was just out with my friends doing my own thing and I have a lot of girlfriends that I'm close to that I wanna see. So it was very confusing and, and stressful in the beginning of dating. Like, so I have to like figure out how to like make time for myself, make time for my girlfriends. It was very confusing, but now I feel like I've really got it down that we've been dating for a long time now. I kind of tell myself if I don't have at least one to two nights every week that are mine for self-care and time by myself without Max, even without friends, because I feel like it's the same thing. Friends can take over your life too. So if you can practice setting boundaries with friends and just being like, I just need a night for myself, that will carry over into like engaged, married, whatever it is. And you'll be able to hopefully like continue that. Because I feel like, I wasn't good at that with friends, so I also wasn't good at that when I started dating. How do you spend your weekend in your current stage of life? I spend my weekends a lot of time in my room, like reading or painting or watching TV and relaxing. And then a lot of time with my friends. I try to go see my family as much as possible, but guys, I'm horrible at scheduling weekends because I just go back to back to back to back and then Lauren's like, Amy, what are you doing? And I'm like, I don't know. Usually I try to block out Saturday mornings for either personal time or friend time. So if I'm like, ooh, I'm feeling social, you know, ask a friend to hang out. Hang out with friends, I'll hang out with him. Or if I'm just like, ooh, I got stuff I need to do, I'll do it Saturday morning up until like one o'clock or something. Then I probably hang out with my fiance. We like go on a hike or something. We don't really hike that much, but like something like that or go on a walk or go get vegan donuts, you know, whatever. Saturdays are usually morning and nighttime could be social time or alone time, whatever. And then Sundays we go to church twice. Sometimes we hang out in between too. So we spend a lot of time together on the weekends, but I always know Saturday morning and Saturday night, I can take those times like to myself or for my friends find you too. So my situation is interesting because my fiance lives like an hour away. It's kind of a matter of, okay, if he's gonna drive up here, you know, how much are we gonna see each other? So Friday nights I will like have to myself or I'll have with girlfriends and then Sunday mornings, like he has to coach practice. So Saturdays I will do whatever, hang out with like friends or do errands or whatever and try to like get my cleaning done and my grocery shopping for the week. And then I usually will have like Saturday night date night with Max. And then also we'll have Sunday mornings together. So we will um, go to church together and then sometimes have like marriage prep class or we'll have like something that we wanna do or just go out to lunch on Sunday. So we, we hang out Saturday night and then we hang out Sunday like during the day. And then usually for the afternoon and evening on Sunday, I'm like preparing for the week, so. And then the weekends are so weird. It's such a weird thing. Like we could have a day where we just like don't hang out all day easily. We definitely spend a lot on Sundays together. We might spend some meals together. We're working on that. We are just too independent. We're like so scared of fusing things together sometimes. Um, we're really working on like having more together time. Different than I thought, but you know, it's a work in progress. We're getting there. It's time for... Oh wait, should we first say something to wrap up? <laughs> Sorry, you... something to wrap up the questions. We hope you guys enjoyed hearing all of our different perspectives on those questions. And now it's time for your favorite part of the video, which is... Question of the week. All right, this question comes from Instagram. This is from nada underscore simfam1. She says, what is your dream vacation? Probably two weeks in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. <gasps> Ooh, two oh, weeks? Yes, because yeah. I was there for like eight hours and it was not anywhere near enough. It flew by, I was like, oh. It was oh. my favorite beach I've ever been to. I was gonna say Hawaii, but I just realized as Lisa said that, that it's actually probably Greece. That would be <gasps> so yeah. cool. I wanna oh, go to Greece. Oh no, I can't pick. Okay, either Italy, which I don't know, or I don't know where, but one of those places where they have like the, um, or, or the huts on the water, the, the hut water. things on the, the water, ocean. whatever. And it's like the clear, like blue. light blue mm. water. Ooh, 
That's I would mine. Love That's that. Mine. That's terrifying. that look. That sounds just so that relaxing. Looks like you You're gonna get swept door, away like, by a wave. I'm in oh my god. god. I want to add a part two to mine. Also, I would love like the opposite, which would be like a ski trip in like a beautiful place in like Colorado. Ooh, Australia. That would be so cool. Let me guess. I hate thinking it is. Yes. I have never once pondered a vacation. Never in my We're life. Never? You hate oh my vacations. God. I hate oh, vacations. Yeah. So, I'd rather I hang vacations. out at my home. But if I was forced to go somewhere, probably like um, Santorini, because like it was in the of the traveling pants. So. It's so cool. Yeah, our girl's got some issues. Anyway, <laughs> click subscribe and join the Sim Fam. <laughs> Make sure to click subscribe and join us here at the Sim Fam. We are a positive community who aims to lift each other up and support each other. And if you feel like you don't belong anywhere else, you belong here with us. And we just want to let you know that we love you and we want to have you here in the fam. So click subscribe. Thanks for watching. We love the Sim Fam.